What we're going to do today is to demonstrate how to inject a carpal tunnel. It's a procedure that if the right uh, guidelines are followed, that it is straightforward and it's not something that one needs to be apprehensive about. It's important, I think, that uh, general practitioners are able to do this as 50% of the uh, patients with carpal tunnels can be resolved by an injection alone. So what I'm going to do uh, first is just to re-emphasize to you or demonstrate the surface anatomy that's important when considering an injection. So if one gets the patient to put the finger, little finger and thumb together and to flex the wrist, this will bring into prominence the palmaris longus tendon, which I'm just marking here on my own wrist. Just to the radial side of that is another tendon, which one can feel, and that's flexor carpi radialis. The nerve itself lies underneath palmaris longus and just a little bit to the radial side. The other important landmark is the pisiform bone, and that's easy to feel on the ulnar side of the wrist, that prominent little bone there. And that is actually the marking place or the attachment of where the ligament actually attaches. So we could draw in the ligament as it goes across and attaches here to the pisiform bone. So this angle here between that line and palmaris longus, here is where you should place the injection. And when the needle is put in, it is put in from that spot. And when you feel on it, you can feel there's a little bit of a sulcus there. And then you advance the needle deeply and distally along the line of the ring finger. And then that keeps you away from the median nerve. We'll demonstrate this after we've interviewed uh, the patient and then demonstrate how it's done with the patient. Good morning, Good Ted. Morning. Ted, I understand from your doctor's letter that um, you've got some problems with your hands and that it's mainly a problem both of numbness and some tingling or pins and needles. Is that, is that right? Is that's that, correct, that's a problem? yes. Can you just explain to me a little bit about what the problem is? Well, at night... Or I get pins and needles and tingling in the fingers severely and then pain develops in the shoulder and travels down my arm um, and it gets pretty severe. Right. Yeah. And it's in both the hands but the left hand is the worst hand. The is left is hand is the worst. worst. I only get it in the fingers on the right hand. Yes. And you said night time is the worst? Is that the, w the worst problem? Yes, it's at night. Usually early hours yes. of the morning. What, what do you do to get rid of the symptoms at that time? All I can do is get out of bed and walk around and start moving my arms and hands. And then it, then it slowly and resolves slowly after that? And that slowly okay. disappears. And I note too that, um, that you also tried you with a splint for a while. Yes, I'm and using and splints. Um, they take the pain away at night. Yes. But they don't take all the tingling all the and that out of the fingers. But overall, help, it helped oh a bit yes, for you. Oh yes, it definitely yeah, helps. Okay. okay. Now, you, do you have any neck problems? You're not, um, um, what's your, your age is 71, that's right, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Do you have any problems in your neck from this? Oh, I, I've got a stiff neck sort of thing, yeah. um, a few aches and pains, yeah. but uh, whether it's caused through this or not, I don't, I don't know. know. Okay. So just hold your hands out for me, please. And the first thing we would like to do is to just note that the, the hands are a little bit thicker, if you like, than normal. But I understand they've always been like that. And then if we look at them in profile, we want to have a look at the contour of the, of the muscle at the base of the thumb. Because those muscles are supplied by the median nerve. And here, those muscles, the contour is a little bit flatter than one would expect, so it suggests a little bit of wasting within those muscles. And if you compare, that, compare it with mine, maybe a little bit hard, but there is 
uh, still a quite a rounded muscle here in the thinner eminence compared with yours. So that, that is a sign which is important to confirm whether or not you've got a carpal tunnel problem. So there's a little bit of wasting. The other thing that's worthwhile feeling for is the degree of sweating in your hand. So if we can just rub our finger along the index finger, it's often where the sweating's absent, which hap happens with a carpal tunnel, then it's much smoother than the finger which is not involved. So this is often sweating a little bit more. There's not a lot of difference in your hand between the two for that. So let's just turn it back again. That's fine. And then we've just got to do one or two tests. One is to the what's called the Tennell's test, and that's just to tap the nerve like this, where's, where the median nerve is, and we'll show later exactly where it is. But does that give you any pins and needles in your hand to do that? Not really, no. no. Or on this side? No. So it's right over where the nerve is? No? No. Okay. And the other is what's called the Phelan's test. So if you can just do what I showed you to do before and then turn your hands this way, that's right, and just hold them like that. So you need to just hold them like that for about one minute. And I think when we did this before, after a minute, you actually got some pins and needles in your fingers. Was that right? And it was more on this yes, left side yeah. than the other side. So, yes. so you did have what we call a positive Phelan's test, which is a test which helps to diagnose uh, the problem. Okay, so turn around again for me. So whereas somebody like yourself has a reasonably good story for yeah. carpal tunnel problem, and where there is evidence of a bit of wasting, and a positive Phelan's test, then it's enough to say, well, almost certainly this is what's called a carpal tunnel. And we can treat that uh, either by an operation or sometimes it may be worthwhile injecting a little bit of cortisone into the tunnel first because 50% of people who have, have an injection yes. find that the symptoms will go and stay away, so it means that you don't need an operation. Yes. So if you are happy, we can maybe today do the injection. That's all right. Yes. And then if that doesn't work, I think it will be reasonable then to proceed with, um, with an operation, which we can do under local anaesthetic for you. It's yes. not, a, not a very big procedure to do. Mm -hmm. The equipment required for an injection of the carpal tunnel is not extensive. You need a pair of disposable gloves. We have here a skin marking pen, not essential, but we're going to use today. Some skin prep, a five milliliter syringe, a gauge 24 or 25 needle, and a drawing up needle. And the solutions used here are Kenacort, a strength of 40 milligrams, uh, and some lignocaine, so that we will mix the two together just to give us a little bit more bulk uh, as we had injected into the carpal tunnel. We're now going to inject uh, Ted's wrist, but before we do that, I'm just going to demonstrate uh, two important landmarks. So Ted, if you could put your f little finger and thumb together as tight as you can and then flex your wrist a little bit, then that actually demonstrates the palmaris longus tendon. So you can see that standing out there quite well. And the median nerve is just underneath that or a little bit to the radial side of it. Relax for me. The other important mark is the pisiform bone and on most wrists that's easy to feel and that's roughly in that area there and that's where the transverse carpal ligament attaches on the ulnar side. So the ligament attaches there and this is palmaris longus. So the site for the injection is really at the skin crease just to the ulnar side, just to the ulnar side of the tendon. So this is the site for the injection there. And if you feel it, you can actually feel there's a little give in that area, so you can feel the firm tendon and it's just therefore on the side as that is there. So to inject then, and we've already mixed up the solution which is in the syringe, 
with that fine needle. And so the point of insertion is that mark that I've put there just to the side of the palmaris longus tendon. Now then, we're going to do this for you. okay? Mm -hmm. And we're going to angle the needle in like that. Well done, Ted. And then we're going to put the needle or push it distally along the line of the ring finger. So this is a ring finger, so we're going along the line of that ring finger. And we can then advance it. And in fact, in this instance, we're probably just a little bit proximal to the tunnel and there's no resistance in there at all, so it means that we're all in a good place for it to go in. And to make sure that it is all right, we withdraw first, and there's nothing coming back. And then, if we're in the right place, then this should go in quite easily. And if it's a little bit of restriction, then we should just move the needle in and out a little bit. Is that giving any pins and needles in your hand? Okay. And so it should go in quite easily as it is going in now into the tunnel itself. So you can see the needle is angled inward and distally along the line of that ring finger. And there it is. It's all going in for him. Good. There we go. And I might say that we did actually skin prep this hand before we started. So we use a little bit of that uh, skin prep that I demonstrated before. So the injection is actually very simple to do, and it's safe. And the important part is, once again, just to make sure you put it in to the right, to the right spot, just to the ulnar side of palmaris longus tendon. So as you can see, to inject the carpal tunnel is relatively straightforward. It is also worthwhile noting that if there is benefit but the condition returns, the injection itself is very good confirmatory evidence of the diagnosis and in itself then is a reason to proceed with surgery.